This team is on fire. A dumpster fire. How hot is Minnesota Wild general manager Bill Guerin's seat right now following an even poorer last 15 games than the first 15? And how can he change it? Is it even worth changing? A heavy dose of those questions answered and more in this week's episode of Bar Down Beauties. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Talk North, Grain Melt, Livia, Royal Credit Union, and Jim Beam. This is Season 5, Episode 211. Let's do the Boldy Shuffle. Soda Stick's latest team collaboration features wild forward Matt Boldy, a Soda Stick and Hockey Lodge exclusive tee. Be sure to shop all Soda Stick sports merch at SodaStick.com, where Bar Down Beauties gets you 15% off every purchase. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition. Like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game, or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporated, Fairmont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's up? Bar Down Beauties, episode 211. I'm Jesse Pierce, writer for NHL.com. Sick as a dog. She's Kirsten Kroll. Not sick yet. It's going to happen, Kirsten. It's the time of year where we're all getting sick. What's up? Are you you're feeling healthy after a, what was it, four games in five days for you? Um, I am healthy, but honestly, my brother got me sick over Christmas. So, like, okay. I've already had it. Nice. I do still feel a little, like, sniffly but like i feel great i'm exhausted but i feel great i mean this has nothing to do with wearing a bikini outside in like below zero temperatures i would like to reiterate that it's definitely kids and lack of sleep in life i would also like to say the cold doesn't get you sick thank you the cold does not get you sick you need a virus you do not get sick just from going outside no Agreed. I completely agree. Thank you for that. Uh, you know what else is making me sick? The Minnesota Wild. Yeah. Not in a good way, but in a very bad way. We have reached the midseason point of the year playing game number 42 against the Arizona Coyotes. Well, the Arizona Coyotes played that game. The Minnesota Wild did not. 6-0 trouncing Kirsten. We have a lot of questions to get to in our cues with the Butte segment. A lot of them pertaining how bad the Wild have been doing. But I just want to start Last week's episode, we were all like, yay, you know, maybe the depth is there. We saw some really good things. They were starting to kind of trend upward. That was all shot to hell, Kirsten. Yeah, there's no depth. (laughs) Well, no, I take that back. There is depth, but no one is doing anything. (laughs) So I don't know. I don't know what the problem is. Like, I I think firing Dean kind of lit a fire under everyone's belt, but I think that fire has since burnt out and I don't know what you do from here. Like some of the good things still like Marcus Johansson still, I feel overall has been accelerating from where he started the season. We've seen more from him, but otherwise, I mean, just I've seen little from most of the players on our team. (laughs) Then we're recording this, as we always do, on a Monday ahead of a game against the New York Islanders today at 5 and ahead of a meeting with General Manager Bill Guerin. First time we've spoken with him in quite some time, obviously, with other things going on. Uh, But he will be giving us his midseason report, so follow along on our social medias to catch up to date with that. But, Kirsten, going back to the beginning of the year, I was very kind of anti this team coming in, and I don't think that even changed. Even when they made the firing, I said, yep, watch, they're going to do their little spurt, and then it's just going to go back to the team. Because this was a team to me that was not necessarily built for a deep run, and again, there are circumstances surrounding why they weren't, and I was questioning whether they were even going to make the playoffs this year. I said they're a bubble team at best. Currently, your Minnesota Wild hold a 17% chance to make the playoffs, um, have just done absolutely atrocious things on the ice, cannot win a game in regulation. Last regulation win was December 27th. But for where they are right now, 27th in the league, are they even worse than we thought entering in? Because I know you were kind of on the same page as me, where you were like, Mm -hmm. yeah, this is a bubble team, but maybe they'll push their way into the playoffs right now. Again, that's looking very, very slim chances. They're worse than I thought they were going to be, if I'm being totally honest. I mean, yeah, I was on the same page with you. We're like, we might be a bubble team. We've seen them fight their way in. 
but especially after this latest stretch of games, getting shut out 6-0 to the Arizona Coyotes, blowing a two-goal lead against the Philadelphia Flyers to force overtime, bad calls or not, missed calls in overtime, you never should have got to overtime no. in the first place. Like, you had that game, and then you lost it. Just to, this horrible stretch that they've recently played, they're even further behind now. So I know last week we talked about, like, is there a chance still to scratch their way into the postseason? I said there was still a chance before we played this stretch. Now that they've lost all of these games in the fashion they have, there's ab- we're not making the playoffs, guys. I'm sorry. Especially when you're, you know, haven't won a game against a, <clears throat> excuse me, division or conference opponent, division opponent, excuse me, I should specify that, including the Dallas Stars, the Winnipeg Jets. Um, it's just, it's not okay. Is there even a point in saving the season? Like, and I'm not saying tank, I'm not saying purposely lose because I hate that mentality. And obviously I'm sure everybody in that locker room hates that mentality as well. But I mean, kind of, do you just put it in, uh, put it in drive and let it go on its own and see what happens? I'm on board for slacking for Macklin. Um, like, I mean, I don't think we really have to slack. We're already doing that. Like, we're yeah. already bad. No, I think at this point, it's just kind of like accepting where we're at. I mean, I still want to see the guys give their effort. There's still, and this is going off what Matt Zuccarello said after the awful loss to Arizona. These fans deserve better. They're paying their hard-earned money. Ticket prices are expensive, guys. People are paying their hard-earned money to come see this team play. Fans who have never seen Kirill Kaprizov play that have been wanting to see him play, what they don't want to see is getting shut out 6-0 at home. Like Fans deserve better. They deserve some sort of effort shown. And this latest stretch, there was not a lot of that. No, and I mean, speaking with Matt Zuccarello post game, exactly as you'd mentioned against that Arizona game, um, you know, he knows it and he's like, he didn't want to say that it was a lack of effort and it's probably not to an extent. I do think these guys are drained. We just talked about us not feeling well because of this insane schedule. They're obviously in a similar boat. I'm not trying to cut them any slack because I did have an epiphany. I'm not paying to go to these games, but those people that are, that are spending hundreds of dollars to see the performances that they have at home. It's, I would be furious. I would be so livid, especially maybe you're not a season ticket holder. And maybe it's a situation where it's the one game a year you get to take your family and they're shut out six, nothing to Arizona, who is not as good as they were to start the season, right? This was mm-hmm. uh, Nick Bukestead, second career hat trick. Love us some Bugi, but it's not exactly a team that you should be falling in a six zero hole to and allowing those things. Um, so it is, it's incredibly, incredibly frustrating. Uh, the one shining glimmer of hope, possibly Philip Gustafson, Kirill Kaprizov return. But as I had been saying, leading up to that game, it's not going to make a damn difference. I don't think Kirill Kaprizov can come in and save this game. Now he looked good in his first game back after missing seven with uh, a rib situation, courtesy of the Winnipeg jets. Um, he had five shots and I think two hits or something like that, but it, he can't do it. I don't think there's any writing the ship. Now, this leads me to my next concerning point. How do we feel about the goaltending, Kirsten? Uh, Gus, obviously, again, had missed seven games with a lower body injury, allows five goals on 18 shots. Flurry has been looking better. I don't think you see Jesper up here again this year because why? Um, and again, not that he played poorly in Dallas. He did every, I agree with all of that. I think that was fine. I think just keep him in, in Iowa for the year. Is Where does goalie goaltending rank on your list of concerns for the team because our list of concerns is lengthy I mean I'm concerned we've talked about it flurry cannot start every single game he can't even play as much of a majority as he could earlier in his career I mean he came into this season fully expecting to be second to Philip Gustafson which you know the he's earned that this point in his career to be like just to kind of take a step back just and coast, relax man. Kind of yeah. at this point too and just enjoy now he's flung into this position where like he has to be the number one night in night out I do think too and I, again I'm not a trainer and I'm not gonna try to speculate on injuries but I wouldn't be shocked if Gustafson if he was rushing back a little bit more from whatever lower body injury he did have, because he didn't look great against Arizona. I mean, you talked about it, five, sh- five goals on 18 shots, getting pulled flurry coming in, like just not a great game. And to be fair, like, yes, he was coming back from missing a stretch of games. So I'm not trying to just sit here and 
criticize he should have been much better, but like that wasn't great. So because of that, that leads me to think maybe he's still battling whatever it was. So, I mean, because of that, yeah, it is a concern and I don't think it's fair. And I said this before, you know, you call up a Jesper Wallstedt, you throw him, feed him to the wolves against (laughs) Dallas. We saw how that went. Poor kid. His first NHL game is like one he wants to forget. Like, and I, I don't want to say like, I knew that was going to happen. Not his fault at all. But I'm just like, that's why I didn't want to see him up here this season. I was like, it's not the time. No. See, and I was not worried about even his confidence. He's got he, the kid's got a good head on his shoulders. I know I talked about that last week. He's got the swag that he's strong enough to not let that get him down. And I think uh, I I still agree with it. I know a lot of people were very upset. Like that's not fair to him. It's not fair. It is what it is, right? I mean, it's a taste of the NHL. If if anything, it kind of reiterates the position that we had both held, where he should probably just stay in Iowa for a bit. But again, not necessarily to get better it's just there's no need to have him here especially with the way this entire team is performing there's no need to have him here there's no No. need to go out there and try to do things I mean do you think the and we'll get into this I'm sure down the road and even in with some of our cues with the Buttes if you're Bill Guerin number one how hot is your seat right now because Dean Evson, as we'd mentioned, was the only card you had to play. A coach firing was really the only thing you had to play. So is Billy G feeling the heat? Again, looking forward to speaking with him tonight, um, post-record here. But also, what do you do come trade deadline now? Because there's no point. You've seen Bill Guerin be very active while the team is, you know, getting closer to, to being good playoff contention, yada, yada. He's always been very active at trade deadline. Again, I'm kind of in the boat where I'm like, what is the point? Like what you're going to go out and get a veteran player when you've already extended a bunch of veteran players, which was probably a silly thing to do in the beginning. But uh, is Billy G seat hot? And what is he going to do come trade deadline, Kirsten? So we, we're, we're going for this now. I know that's the anticipated question. We, we're going to just right now. Should we? Do you want to hold it? We could hold it. Did, oh yeah, that's true. That is the top question of our cues with the Buttes. I know. Of, I was going to say that's like yeah. literally everything everybody wants to know. That's everything. Got, that was just teasing you up. You're right, Kirsten. That's see, you're keeping me in line. This is good. This is hey, why we need. You know, I've had a little bit of coffee today, so I've got. <sighs> despite the fifty games that I've worked this week, yeah, I'm still here. I'm still kicking it. I know. Well, you're right. Let's hold that for the next segment in our cues with the beauty speaking of games that you worked and games that i worked i'm not sorry that i missed out on yesterday's because it felt really nice to not be at the xl energy center but the women continue to dominate professional sports in minnesota pwhl minnesota losing their first game of the season last night kind of blowing another lead as i saw and falling in overtime but all in all first of all Huge round of applause to the state of hockey for you guys continuing to show up. I know I was there Wednesday, definitely a quieter crowd than the 14,000 we saw on opening night, which was to be expected. It's a Wednesday night. They were bumped up against the wild, a lot of different factors. But then, Kirsten, I think I saw 8,000 last night or close to 8,000 yesterday afternoon. Love to see you guys continuing to show up. So shout out to them. But, Kirsten, you have seen them now three games here at home. They're going to be hanging a banner at the X probably in the inaugural year, correct? I, you know, I don't want to put that pressure on them, but I say they're definitely a contender. And I definitely think they're going to be the first team to hang a legitimate banner at the XL Energy Center. If we're being honest, <laughs> a legitimate, because don't forget, fans, you're number one in, in our book here. The banner at the XL Energy Center shows it. Well, and the Nashville Predators, too, have a number of banners they like to hang as well. That is also true. But that's your that's your other squad, right? It is. It's, a closeted it, Nashville fan. But hey, I can... Literally I can wearing a Nashville sweatshirt on air right now. Well, you couldn't see that until I showed... What does <laughs> it matter? What does it I'm matter? I hate, I'm with you. We're always Thank on you. the same side of trying to get the Preds to be better than whatever mm-hmm. they are. But uh, <laughs> better yeah, I'm this. excited, I think. PWHL has the best goaltending in the league, hands down. Um, and you're starting to see some of their top players get going, which is good. I know Lee Steckline sh- uh, scored last night. Official Butte, Kelly Panic gets her first of the year. Kendall mm-hmm. Coyne the other night gets her first of the year. So that's definitely boating and trending in the right direction. The thing that I also love, if the PWHL Minnesota squad is the one to go and win it this year, which will be tremendous, I love that they would do it upon a bunch of minnesota bread players agreed i know i just think it would be so cool 
I'm thinking about it now. That would be so cool. <laughs> Let's just all have a moment to think about it. I know. Oh, like, like, wow. To have a winning team? It's good fancy. There'd still be a parade down West 7th. Yeah. And potentially a parade in Minneapolis with the Wolves. Like, there's... Yeah, they're still going. Right? 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 I know. People got very upset when we discussed Wolves last time. I don't care. We didn't discuss them. I think we literally just said... Commented just, We just howled. Them. Should we howl? Oh! <laughs> Of making people mad. So for everyone who complained, <laughs> I'm going to do it even more now. And I'm looking at you. I was kind of. Oh! I'm and waiting Bodie, for Bodie to even, jump like, up. He's looking and trying. You see, he's moving the mic like he's ready too. <laughs> well, we have a ton more to discuss about the state of your Minnesota Wild. Again, recording this on a Monday ahead of a New York Islanders game, ahead of a Bill Guerin check-in. So we're just going to toss all of our thoughts out there. I'll bring them up to Billy G this afternoon, Kirsten. Don't you worry. As you um, should. Yeah, so let's take a quick break. When we come back, cues with the Buttes, Wild Week Ahead, and much more. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Jesse Pierce here. Now is the time to choose you and get healthier the Livia way. When you join Livia, you'll receive a personalized and doctor-recommended program tailored to your unique needs, goals, and lifestyle. The Livia team of dedicated nutrition experts will guide you every step of the way, providing you with the tools, support, and motivation you need to succeed. I know for me as a brand ambassador, I could not have reached my goals and kept the weight off without the help and one-on-one -on -one support of my Livia team in Woodbury. Now down over 30 pounds in just a couple months and still going, my goals are within reach thanks to Livia. You can join Livia today and get your first three months absolutely free. Visit Livia.com, that's L-I-V-E-A.com, or call 855-GO-LIVIA. Livia is now offering breakthrough weight loss medication options as well. Visit Livia.com or call 855-GO-LIVIA. It's time to choose you and get started on your weight loss journey the Livia way we're back uh let's dive in Kirsten to our cues with the buttes a lot of questions a lot of questions that all kind of circulated around the same types of things you know why is Bill Guerin hiding uh is he on the hot seat all of those things so we will address them probably in clumps versus individually maybe some individually again reminder we will be speaking with Bill Guerin this evening ahead of the Islanders game. But as always, we record this Monday morning and we ain't changing that because we release it tomorrow for you lovely people. So to kick us off uh, at AFC Young, he wants to know, Kirsten, when does the teardown begin? The Wild seem they are that they are moving further away from a cup than closer. He also has a couple other follow ups that I will get to after we take this one by one. But uh, would you agree further away from a cup contender? And do you just tear it down and completely rebuild, which is something that Bill Guerin and Craig Leopold have been so incredibly adamant on not doing? No, I don't think you tear down and rebuild it. I mean, th we knew coming into even the buyouts, like we knew we weren't going to win a cup. We knew we were going to be cap constrained. Just, I don't think people in Minnesota are used to us being in this position because in this state, we've been so spoiled with this wild team making the playoffs literally almost every single season. And like, yeah, everyone's starving for a cup. Everyone wants it. But if we're like looking ourselves in the mirror and being honest with ourselves, we knew, especially this season, we were not going to be contenders. So I think right now this is just like, I don't know, a rude awakening. People are realizing like our team is not good right now. And honestly, not till probably 2025 are we really going to be a contender again so no I don't see the point in doing a full tear down rebuild maybe once we're out of the cap constraints and if our prospects that we have that are showing promise don't rise to the occasion then maybe yeah after that you take a look and are like okay maybe we need a different game plan but right now no no I mean you can't tear it down because you have everybody locked up in contracts that doesn't allow you to really do a heck of a whole lot of tearing down. Yeah, there's and I that will, too. Yeah, I will say the the two bright spots of this season are Brock Faber and Marco Rossi, right? They're finding mm -hmm. their own Marco Rossi. Again, I don't think is a top six forward anywhere else, but he has certainly proven himself to be one here in Minnesota, which I think you really need to lean into. And Brock Faber is going to be an outstanding defenseman for years to come. And he has certainly exceeded my expectations for him in his rookie season. So, I mean, those are your two bright spots. Matt Boldy, 
um, you know, up and down this year, but he's not exactly completely out of favor in my book. So I think those three young guys and Jewel Erickson, I would even toss in there as far as being one of the more consistent forwards on the roster. Um, so you have that going for you, which I think is good. So I think an entire rebuild, in addition to not being able to, you still have some guys that you do want to hang on to moving <clears throat> forward in the future. Mm-hmm. Excuse Absolutely. me. Yeah. I was going to say, I want to yell for a second. Can I just like, let's go do it. You mentioned Jewel Erickson Eck, whoever started the rumor that the wild are shopping him to trade him to Vancouver. And like people who are throwing that idea out there, like it's a legitimate thing. One, why? Like, (laughs) why are you like wanting to propose him as an option to get rid of? And two, no. So also shout out to Michael Russo, who also responded to a wild fan who asked him about it. And he's like, no, that is just Vancouver making swear word up. Like, <laughs> like and there's word. no truth to it. And I'm mad at whoever started spreading that. And it's continued to circulate. No. Just Are no. you still butthurt that Brock Besser went after Jewel Eric's neck and they wish that Brock Besser were here? I don't know. I feel like that's would- part of it. I want Jewel any day of the week. He's a wild player through and through. You're right. Um, you know, we kind of addressed <laughs> AFC Young's second part of the question. Does GMB G currently think this roster is a cup contender? I mean, I think he probably wholeheartedly does. Again, I'm really interested. I've never been super keen on the midseason check-in because it's a lot of lip service and kind of like, oh, yeah, we like this. This year's different, right? Like this year arguably the second half of the first half has been worse than the first half, which was already pretty darn bad. So I'm curious to see what uh, Garen has to say for himself, but yeah, we already addressed that. The next question, which I do think is interesting. Are we watching the decline of number 46, number 46 being Jared Spurgeon seems he has been injured the last few years. Can you trade him? They're not going to trade Jared Spurgeon. I will outwardly say that, but this has been a rough year as far as that it's the same injury that just keeps popping back up and Jared Spurgeon also on the latter end of uh, his age and his playing age, if you will. So I am curious to think or to hear Kirsten, what you think about Jared Spurgeon and what the future holds for him with the Minnesota wild. Another guy that's been with the wild from the jump. We love our guys like that. And Jared Spurgeon is a consistent uh, defenseman when healthy and unfortunately mm-hmm. that health aspect is the thing that's getting in his way yeah well especially to like right now this season it's hard because it's easier to count the games he's missed than like he's actually played like we've seen him a handful of times this season which quite frankly it really stinks because we could use him and this team is better when Jared Spurgeon's on the ice he brings his hockey sense everything and is one of the better defensemen on our team for sure. But yeah, he's getting the injuries for one, not helping him out. And yeah, he's getting to the back end in his career. I don't, I mean, I'm going to agree with you. I don't think he's getting traded outwardly. No, but I mean, I do think you have to start looking at him and being like, what are we getting in return? Yeah. A lot of, a lot of, good points and a lot of things to consider even from Spurgeon's perspective, right? Like, is this going to be an injury that nags him the rest of his career? And then what do you do? Um, you know, what does that look like? Again, we've, we've often here in Minnesota considered Spurgeon, one of the more underrated defensemen in the league. And he is, especially for a guy, his size, he came into camp, um, undrafted and made the team. And, you know, he's been through a lot. It's a great storyline and Spurge is, has done a lot of good things for, for Minnesota, but it is curious, especially when you have a guy, like Brock Faber, who has really stepped up in his absence and in Broads' absence and and all of that. So very curious to see what might happen with Spurge. I'm more curious, too, to see what happens with him the rest of this year. Like, does he yeah. make a comeback? I mean, there's still a lot of hockey to be played. Uh, but at the same time, if it's better for him to sit out and heal up, that mm-hmm. I'm okay with that, I think. Well, especially because they recently also tried bringing him back. And- yeah didn't work out so that honestly seeing that is what was a bigger concern to me than the initial injury that he tried to come back and just wasn't ready that's my biggest fear he did have a substantial amount of time off still yeah before coming back yeah i'm worried kaprizov's gonna get re-injured i'm worried gustafson's gonna get re-injured 
I don't know if Broke's I don't think either of them are the fully Islanders. healed to begin no. with. I have heard that it's a fractured rib for Karel Kaprizov, which takes a little bit longer than two I weeks heard that to heal. Well. I would imagine so. Um, but we'll see. Let's go at Jumpman J three sixteen wants to know: Has the Minnesota Wild team just given up? Yes and no. I would say, especially after Arizona, even during the game, I there was somebody in the arena. We're just like, take a look at the bench. Like the guys are getting chippy with each other. And then after that game, you have a 20 minute closed door players only meeting. I don't want to say they've given up, but I think frustrations are probably at a record high right now. Yeah, I was standing outside waiting to get into that locker room. I saw Arizona come and go. I could have usually I do hit both rooms, but usually it's kind of a a seesaw, if if you will, of me going back and forth. And this time I would have had complete uh, ability to do just all of Arizona and then go in. It was a players only meeting. And Matt Zuccarello said, um, you know, a lot of the messaging after that game and during that game was just kind of felt very much like an airing of grievances where guys took their turn and just had to say what they had to say, but that's going to make things worse. You can't turn on each other. So have Mm -hmm. the Minnesota wild given up? I don't think so. Again, they're professional athletes. No, no matter how bad your team is, even the Detroit lions shout out Detroit lions and Eminem for being able to go to the NFC North championship. Um, or not North, excuse me. You know what I mean? Again, my brain's not fully there today, guys. Can't wait for anyway, the comments but, yelling at us. I know. It's not the episode. NFC North. I understand. They're going to go play the pack, whatever. Um, football. And uh, when they went 0-16, I don't think you give up. I think it's you get very deflated. But I think it's really, really hard in any professional level and any athletic level just with the competitiveness within you to just give up. So, no. Do I want them to give up? Maybe a little bit more. Like, don't don't toy with our hearts anymore, right? Like, it just mm-hmm. it seems silly. So I also would have paid an absurd amount of money to be a fly on the wall in that locker room as they were airing out grievances after that Arizona game, just to hear what was being aired against John Merrill after taking two <sighs> bad penalties alone in that game. <sighs> Oh boy, Johnny Merrill. It is, you know, the writing was kind of on the wall. John Hines said that there were, and I felt like he said three, but I could be completely wrong, but there were three specific players that felt like that he was going to be speaking with and that he was going to remove from the lineup ahead of today's game against the Islanders. Now, again, it's a team game and Mm -hmm. everybody contributed to that loss, whether they wanted to or not. But yeah, there are some players that have been far worse. Let's let's talk to Johnny Merrill. Let's skip ahead now and let's talk about oh Johnny Merrill. Um, you know, BR Hertel asks, why does Merrill continue to play over Hunt? Uh, a couple other people had said, why is John Merrill still in the lineup? Uh, a lot of disdain for number four, who again, I just feel necessary to say is a tremendous human being. He is a great dad. He is very representative for the LGBTQ t plus community um just a just a good dude i don't a terrible ice hockey player at this point just not a good ice hockey defenseman why is john merrill we talked about it last week my take is because he's trusted on the pk more than damon hunt is but that's literally the only reason i can think of kirsten do you have any other ideas does he have some like dirt he knows where the skeletons are or like maybe right he's an oklahoma boy like I don't know what, you know, I don't know. (laughs) Also, I feel like from now on, when I think of John Merrill, I'm going to think of him as this is going to be so random without the back context. But when I think of John Merrill, I'm going to think of him as the man who wanted to drive the Zamboni after practice. (laughs) Like one of my Did he coworkers ride the, drive the Zamboni after yeah, practice? Yeah, he like, was like asking, I guess, like if he could drive the Zamboni. And somebody was like, no, <laughs> like you need a license for that. That's incredible. I know. That's... And so I just thought that was really funny. And I'm like, John Merrill, I love that for you. Like he seems yeah. like a fun dude. He does. You know, maybe he stays in the lineup so he for can always be the scape. That's the scape why. Boat. For the yeah. vibes. Well, for the good vibe. But I was thinking so they could always point the blame at somebody. Oh, that like too. maybe if you're so focused on how bad he's doing, you're distracted by how bad everybody else is doing. Fair. Right. And also he seems like a vibe guy. He's, he's, a, he's a vibe guy. It's the hair. It's the general 
physical appearance of john merrill that gives you a a, just a different vibe a kooky vibe an eccentric vibe i think right yeah yeah it's a little eccentric um a lot of questions about john merrill a lot of questions about bill garen i'm gonna lump Mm -hmm. these all in why is billy g hiding it's his train wreck be a leader and come out and be accountable do we think garen is on the hot seat um where was another one another comment i don't think that the losing had so much to do with dean e he was just the scapegoat lot of lot of questions and rightfully so again i'm super excited to talk to bill garen today uh before the game i do find it ironic that he's giving us a 15 minute window before puck drop like it's 4 45 that we get to chat with him so i imagine that is very deliberate in an effort to keep questions kind of condensed and answers even more mm. condensed um i think he was quote unquote hiding for a little bit not necessarily to do with the on ice stuff it's more of the off ice dramatics i do think he's probably hasn't been allowed to discuss any of the legal proceedings any of that so it's probably been easier for him to steer clear of media as it pertains to that just so he Mm -hmm. doesn't have to be bombarded with those questions the other reason i think it may appear that he's hiding which he's not he's been at the games lately i've said hello to him in the press box he's been fine he's kind of coming back around i'm sure he's trying to figure out ways to correct the quote unquote train wreck. I'm sure he's talking to all the people that he can. I'm sure he's probably feeling the heat of the, of his seat getting a bit warmer. Cause he knows like what, not necessarily. I don't think he's a guy that's ever going to second guess himself and be like, what have I done? But I think he's taking a very deep look at himself and the team that he's created and maybe starting to wonder, is there, is there anything worth saving here? Yeah. I guess from my perspective, there's two things. One, I don't feel like he was ever, like, hiding. For one, and I mean, maybe he's spoken to the media less this season than normal because he's always been a GM who's kind of just been out there, very outspoken. But I guess, too, I I mean, and I'm not, like, in the media scum or any scrum. I don't know. Don't call us scum. That sounds terrible. That's not what I meant. (laughs) I don't know what you guys call yourselves. You're the post game uh, the smartest people on the planet is what we call ourselves some more than others but the scrum is that the scrum <laughs> scrum that's what i meant i didn't mean scum but i didn't i meant to say scrum you know what i mean oh, but just as far as like getting access to talking to him like yes as far as legal proceedings i mean that just i feel is just kind of like a rule of thumb is you're not supposed to talk about that until it's kind of after the fact But as far as like everything else, I don't feel like he's really been hiding. And then my take too, as far as if his seat's getting warm, I feel the one thing you can question him on is the extensions he signed with the no move clauses to the three players at the start of the year, because that ties us into a space where we can't make any moves. But also, I don't think this season it's worth it to make any moves. And also, again, I circle back to we knew we were going to be in this type of position where we weren't going to win when we had those buyouts. So my take, I don't think his seat's warm at all. I feel like him, Leopold had conversations before any of these moves happened and we're on the same page under a same understanding. I just don't think his seat's warm until again, we go back to 2025 and, or we go ahead to 2025 and see what that team when we actually have expectations for what we can be if we don't live up to them sometimes heads got a roll though right I mean, yeah and, absolutely i mean this team is finally and i say finally because it really is a, this team is all bill garrett now right it mm-hmm. before you had different pieces that he didn't necessarily have a hand in or you know he was dealt different things and he certainly put his fingerprints all over the team which any good general manager does right he had to do that and I, I will scream it from the mountaintops. I still agree with the buyouts. I do not disagree with that. But the biggest question, and you said it, Kirsten, it's those extensions. We've been questioning it ever since. Um, you know, Matt Zuccarello, Ryan Hartman, and uh, Marcus Felino getting the extensions when they did, which seems odd in and of itself. But to have those no moves put into place in the contract, which start this year too, I mean, that just... You already were had your back up against the wall, but it just seems like you're really cementing yourself to this. You're going down with that ship. Like, this is the team. And it seems odd when you're talking about the future and knowing that you have some of these young guys to chain yourselves to older players 
and and claim them to be your core it just seems very interesting it still is a is a move that you know i'm sure will come up again today when we speak with bill garen the reason that i don't think he'll be on the hot seat is i think craig leopold loves him right Mm -hmm. i think leopold absolutely adores him but I do wonder if the conversations get more serious and more heated between Garrett and Leopold because Craig Leopold does not like to miss the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You said it in the first uh, segment, Kirsten, that Minnesota has been very fortunate to make the playoffs. The last time they missed, I think, was 2018-19 in the Zach Parise, Ryan Suter era, right? And that's not something that happens often for Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And I imagine... Craig Leopold does not like that. That's a big reason that he doesn't want to rebuild. He'd rather go to the playoffs and get bounced in the first round than miss them all together. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be interesting. I am, I'm very curious to see what happens. Uh, Another thing with Leopold too, is he's very loyal to his people. Yeah, very much. Although he let Ryan Suter go and that was like his bro. That was his buddy. So sometimes things can be changed, Yeah, but even then, like he still has tremendous respect for him. Yeah, right, 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 right. Which Minnesota Wild fans don't, but you mm-hmm. know, I think Stars fans are even booing him too. Like he's falling out of favor very quickly. I'm sorry. I just I I'm gonna I need to laugh a little bit. That's funny <laughs> to me. Sometimes I forget he's still around. Somewhere. He's still around. He's still floating around. How could you forget in that last Dallas visit? I think it's like I, it's similar to selective hearing. Like I pay attention fair. to what I want to pay attention to. That's completely fair. I mean, it shout out to Minnesota fans. Sorry. They're they're so quick on the uptake when he touches the puck. Like he barely gets the puck and the, the booze they're are on right. top of it. They're so on top of it. It's impressive. Like, fans, I love you for that. I do too. Uh so hopefully that answers some of the Garen questions. Again, follow our social media and check back with what happened. I guess it would be yesterday now at this point when you're listening to it but another question we had from jill on air if you could get rid of one player from this team forgetting about any no move no trades who would it be and why also do the guys seem as disconnected in the locker room as they do on the ice love that question jill shout out to jill one of my faves uh listen to her over on 93x by the way uh kirsten why don't you take this one first um i'm not in the locker room but i would say just from seeing what I have seen on the bench in that Arizona game and then knowing about that meeting, not all what went on in there, but just like knowing about the meeting, I would say, yes, they're as disconnected in the locker room as on the ice. I don't think they're on the same page. And also if you've listened to me on this podcast at all, you know what player I would say. And that is all I need to say. Just, I mean, do you want to say it again? If you go back five minutes, you'll know. (laughs) Uh, In an effort to be different, I would say, see, the tough thing is here, I'm going to go off off rails a little bit. Yes, John Merrill and Alex Goligoski are probably the top players to move, right? Um, I don't think you're going to have any question about any argument on them staying here with the team that they make the team better on the ice. Again, on the ice being the specific part to that. However, the reason I am going to try to think of somebody different, Mm -hmm. and I I have a name, um, is because what are you going to get in return from them? For them, like we joked last week that I would, you'll get a Gretzky autograph for like dinner with (laughs) Mario Lemieux. You're not getting anything back for them, which to me is always so frustrating. I hate trading guys for a bag of pucks, right? I just I feel like I know who you're going to say too. And who do you want to guess? Who you think I'm going to say? Philip Gustafson. No, but I have seen that circulating quite a bit lately. I I understand it, you know, like I understand. I just, who else? You're, you're going to overpay for a goaltender then. If you get rid of Philip yeah. Gustafson, you're going to end up going in with Jesper Valstead and an un, either you're going to go with an unknown or you're going to overpay for a goaltender uh, in free agency this summer. And I don't love that. Like you've already kind of put your chips into the Gus pile. Give him another year. He, he has those spurts right and if he goes into next year being more of a backup he'd be fine so no but i do i have heard people chewing on his name quite a bit um i would trade freddie goudreau Mm -hmm. and i would trade mark uh marcus johansson's only got a year left so i wouldn't go him i would honestly maybe move a marcus felino or ryan hartman i hate to go back to those guys right but if we're saying that the no moves and no trades are no longer there. Yes, I understand the presence Marcus Felino has, but also 
you would have a lot of teams, especially if you're talking about the trade deadline, who would love them a Marcus Foligno to make a cup run, right? You have teams that would be contenders that would love to add a Marcus Foligno. So you would get a good value for him, I think. So if I'm speaking specifically on those terms of what Minnesota can get in return, Felino would yield a pretty decent return. Ryan Hartman might yield a decent return. I think more than Merrill or uh, Goligoski would. And same with Freddie Goudreau. I'm not saying tremendous. I think Felino would get you the most, but the other two guys, I wouldn't necessarily, I hate saying this because me and Hartsey were BFFs, were shoe buds, but I don't think you'd miss them on the team. I don't think you'd miss a Freddie Goudreau. I don't think you'll miss a Ryan Hartman on the team. Yes, you'd miss Moose in a lot of areas, but I think the value is really there. See, I argue with you in the sense I think Hartman this season brings more than Moose has. Oh, good point. Yeah, he's he his on ice play. It's it's very erratic, I think. Like it's kind of all over. His temper, man, though. Like it's yeah, it you know, that makes it tough. I think if if he can get right there which you also don't want right because i like when he plays with that fire like he definitely has that is just sometimes it's too much where again it's hurting the team more than it's helping but you're right i mean he's reminded us a couple times how good he is at scoring right mm-hmm. and how pretty his goals can be so you're you're probably not wrong he might be more on par with a felino return than i credited him, him for yeah well i hey, know- solid take though makes people think Makes people think that's what we're all about. Let's have the conversation. Let us know who you would trade, who you would move, um, and would love to hear that. The second half, are they as disconnected in the locker room as they appear on the ice, I think is great. It's tough to say. It's been, I mean, certainly recency bias, the Arizona game, it was so somber. And I laugh at myself because I I feel like I lost too. Like I go in and I'm just like, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. That's like my whole mentality, you know, out of respect. Like I don't, I don't want to be inappropriate and be like, well, that sucked, huh? What do you guys think? Like, I'm not going to go in there all energy bound, but it is funny how my mood completely transitions yeah. into like very it's funny. Very- you say that. Cause I think it was in the Philly game. I was in the elevator with Bill Guerin and he's v- so nice. Such yeah. a nice guy. He like said something. I think he's like, well, that didn't go like planned or something. And I was like, I really thought we had it. And then he just looked down and like, I don't know. It was funny. Tough scene. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you could have like, yeah, but it's, it's definitely weird. I can't tell. Normally I am so quick to say these guys in the locker room are so tight. They're so close. They don't let this get them down. I think there is some discombobulation right now in the locker room too, just because not necessarily because they're turning on each other or anything like that. I don't, I don't see that as being a part of it because they are so close. I just think they're all kind of at a loss. They're all pissed off. I mean, not necessarily at one another, but just in general with how the year is going again, they cost a guy his job and they still haven't figured it out. And, you know, I don't think, it's a good feeling if you're in that locker room. I'm sure it's a bad feeling. Not to mention when you get booed by your home team. I mean, Matt Zuccarello, I loved, he was like, Hey, I'm a Manchester United fan and I, I get mad at them too. And I, I, I love get it. He's like, too. but I love them. Like, I mean, it brings it to a real place, right? Like the guys get it. They feel it. And it's, it's not a good feeling to let people down. And I think they're all very, very well aware that they are letting the Minnesota wild fans down. Can they change that? I don't know. But they're going to have to come together in the locker room in order to change it on the ice. So if there is any rifts or any um, discontinuity, discontinuity, is that even a word? Did I just make that up? Discontinuity? Continuity is a word. Discontinuity is a word. Okay, let's go with that. Continuity, one of the two. They're going to have to come in line together at some point in time. So we'll see uh, again all these questions, fantastic. Sorry if we didn't get to it. We have two more that I will address, and I'm just going to answer them, Kirsten, if you don't. Or, well, the one I'm just going to answer. The other one, I, we need to hear from you, too. But this one comes from Hockey and Loud Music. Why are cages full shields required for the PWHL? So I did get to the bottom of this because I kind of hypothesized it's an IIHF thing because, obviously, the IIHF rules are very embedded into PWHL, which I think makes sense because a lot of the players play at that level as far as the elite level. Um, it is actually not required. However, in speaking with Glenn Andreessen, who now works with the PWHL Minnesota team, he said, I think if they were given the option, a lot of players wouldn't even go without a cage or without a a full thing because that's what they played with their whole career growing up in college. That's what they played with in, again, on the international stage. That's what they do. So it is not technically required. They've never issued a statement saying that it should be. Um, I think the girls and the women are just 
so used to wearing that. So that's why you're seeing the cages and the bubbles. In fact, I think probably more men should wear it. So they're not getting their face blown out with a puck every so often. But again, I'm sure if you're used to seeing the ice, how you see it. And if that's been with a cage or a bubble, that's, that's what it is. Final question, which is happy go lucky, which we love. Uh, Bay area fan, Sam wants to know what was your favorite hockey memory growing up? Ooh, I have, it's not my favorite memory, but it's like a very, it's a memory I'm never going to forget. I will say. So it was back, I think 2017, summer of 2017, I was in Greece. I did a two-week study abroad in college. So I was in Greece. It was when the Nashville Predators were in the Stanley Cup final against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, Very cool to be all the way over in Greece and on the TVs on this island. They literally had the Stanley Cup final on. So I thought that that was super cool, just being all the way over there. Um, Now, where this goes south is I thought I was going to make it home in time to see the end of the Stanley Cup final, um, literally at the airport. And if you know me, I am a closeted Nashville Predators fan. It's not and closeted. So, we all know. Well, some people don't know. And I, you know, I try not because <laughs> I am a wild fan, but also like might be frowned upon to be a fan of a division rival, whatever. But so where this goes south in this story is when I'm at the airport and on my way home and this girl who was on her phone was like, Pittsburgh won the final. And I was like, I want to die. <laughs> oh, I'm I sorry. Know. So that's that mine. Out that's you. one that sticks with me. But it was cool being on an island and seeing the Stanley Cup final all the way over there. That is. That's pretty incredible. I guess I have, I've got like three that always stick in my head. The first one was my first ever state tournament experience. Matamidae, which did not frequent the state tournament when I was growing up, uh, had made it for the first time when I was in seventh grade. And I wasn't really super into hockey yet in middle school. I hadn't played. I was a basketball player. Um, But I went to that state tournament with a friend who was very into hockey. And I remember being like, wow, this is so cool. Those guys are so hot. And I just loved hockey. And so that was one of my first memories. The other one goes back to high school. Um, I had a lot of friends that went to White Bear. My dad had gone to Hill Murray, so I went to a White Bear Hill Murray uh, section final game at the Coliseum. For those of you that remember that, and it was just electric. Like that's when I really fell head over heels to. I think I was like a junior in high school, and I was just like, "Oh my god, I love this game. I love this environment. Like it was just so cool." Especially since I didn't necessarily have a horse in the race. Like it was just a really fun thing. That rivalry continues to be great. And then my third and final one is also a Stanley Cup memory that you kind of just. Uh, redid in my brain i was at annual congress for usa hockey which is their annual meetings out in colorado springs and naturally we went out to a bar post dinner and got to watch the washington capitals win the stanley cup Mm -hmm. um for those of you that don't know my dad has alzheimer's tj oshi's dad also had alzheimer's he unfortunately passed away a couple years ago but the moment seeing tj oshi crying and saying how much it means to his dad to have that memory just hit me in all the feels because at that point my dad was very early on in his alzheimer's journey and i just remember being like oh that's that's everything like how amazing for him how amazing for his dad and that's one memory that i will just never shake because it just felt that instant connection and i was just so happy for him and his family so that's kind of the very heart i got chills when you said that because i that interview is one of the interviews that sticks in my mind honestly yeah one of the best post-game interviews from tj oshi i've ever seen just not even just tj oshi just post-game interviews interviews in general so authentic Mm -hmm. and raw those emotions are what you can only hope to get from players Right. Like it, it just I can only imagine how special that was for him. And I feel like everyone felt that. Exactly. I mean, I think ever yeah, whether you have that direct connection to Alzheimer's or not, you did. You felt that for him and a kid a kid and his dad, right? And essentially mm-hmm. it did. It put him as a kid and uh that's just a huge Stanley Cup memory for me. I I loved every minute of that. So let's uh let's wrap her up shall we great questions as always if you have more questions we are going to try to bring these back weekly uh if you guys have a sponsor that want to sponsor cues with the buttes let us know we would love to have you on board uh that because that would be kind of fun um but speaking of sponsors grain belt sponsoring this month's buttes live which is happening this thursday at 6 p.m 
at Park Place in St. Paul Park. We've been there before. Super fun atmosphere, fun environment. And we are doing a pregame special as it leads up to the Minnesota Wild Puck Drop, Minnesota on the road. Uh, so we will have the show wrapped up by the Puck Drop. But join us for some pregame fun, trivia, giveaways, beer specials, all that good stuff, stuff Excuse me, out at Park Place, 6 p.m. on Thursday, January 18th. Can't wait to see you there. Shout out to all of our sponsors, uh, Green Belts, Livia, Royal Credit Union, Jim Beam, Talk North, and Soda Stick. Also, shout out to Unreal with their third hometown series drop coming this Thursday, 10 a.m. Kirsten and I will be modeling those for you. Don't forget, those are exclusive drops with Unreal and the Minnesota Wild. So be sure to hop on board, get those sweatshirts as quickly as you can before they sell out. Always great quality. Uh, so shout out to them. And uh, you guys, you guys are the best. Kirsten, we didn't do a wild week ahead. Should we do that real quick? Yeah, we can. You know, it's always kind of fun. I feel like we've both fallen off. I've mostly fallen off the rails with my yeah, predictions. Yeah, you had three and one. I was close with mine. It's been bad. It's been a tough scene. Um, let's go. So Islanders play tonight. We're, we already made that prediction. They are at the Tampa Bay Lightning on the 18th at 6 p.m. Central. What do you got for that game? Hmm. <laughs> I say they win that game because they have to. Okay, so that's have victory to. in Tampa. How about it's the first of a back to back? They then go to Florida at 6 p.m. on Friday. No, they're going to lose. <laughs> All right. And then Sunday at the Carolina Hurricanes. They're going to lose. Gonna Sorry, lose. Guys. And we can make our predictions when they are home for another three, including against your National Predators, next week. So I'm going to go with, they're going to lose all of them. I'm done. I'm done with the positivity. It's three straight L's. I'll make it uh, an overtime loss to Tampa, though. Okay. I'm going one and two. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. That's going to do it for this week's episode again. As always, you guys are the best. We appreciate every single one of you. Don't forget, we've got buttes previews all of that fun stuff over on our social media channels on tiktok youtube uh instagram twitter wherever you can find us until next week go wild yeah that was purposely without a lack of enthusiasm because that's how i feel about it just go wild bye Near, 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 near.